Hello and welcome to the first ever Lair podcast. You're here with me, hey. aka King of Ultima, and go ahead. But don't do that. Don't say aka. Just say... <laughs> take two. Take so, two. It's so fun because we can we can use this. This is fun. We can use this. Okay. But you don't say, I'm Josh, a.k.a. King Demotima, because that makes it sound like they should already know King Demotima. And no one does. We shouldn't do that. We should just say Josh. Cool people do. It's fine. We can use this. This is good. This is good. Keep... Dave, you introduce yourself. That, I'll, I'll do it. Dave, that's Dave. Right. <laughs> no, go on. Dave, so, go on. That's it. That works. That's fine. Well, thanks for that, Dave. Thanks for the contribution. I'm good. I'm Max. I'm sort of, Sounds I'm, amazing. I'm, I'm holding this together. <laughs> right. This is quite self-indulgent so far, isn't it? Yeah. So first it's, topic is. First, well, let's let's talk a bit about us first. You know, they want they want they go. Oh, who are these three fuckers? That's great. They're doing a podcast. Okay. But what's it in aid of? How do these guys? How do we know what's their sort of? What's their? I don't know. How to speak English is hard. Okay. <laughs> no. What, what do they their, do? What, what what right are they to talk to us about games? Who actually is Max? Well, thanks for that, Dave. Uh, <laughs> Josh, you, you know, me and Josh, we know each other because we worked for the same game company, didn't we? Yep. Um, that was a couple of years ago. <clears throat> Josh works for them still now. I'm probably going to start again in a couple of days. <clears throat> what do you do, Dave? I currently work in a bar, but I also met Josh back in school, pretty much, from about... <laughs> pretty much. Six pretty much. years old, I don't know how old we are. Like, it was a long time ago. Okay, so you guys <clears throat> you guys go way back. Playing Clan and Conquer, Lan at his house. This, this, when you were six? Something like that. I don't know what game it was. It was a long time ago. My, like his, my, dad had, his dad shipped my first PS1. Put yeah, it that way. my dad was kind of the dirty Dave of the block. He used to <laughs> get everyone out and he shipped their Playstations and knocked out... Just saying it, I never paid for a PS1 game. I probably did, but not like, you know. You know, this probably isn't stuff you should put on a gaming website. How, how, good, we are, how good you guys were in Josh's dad was a piracy. Uh, yeah, PS1 wasn't was online, so you get away with it then. Look down upon so much. Like, you could get like I think, I think when back catalogue on PS1 on a, uh, back in those days I don't think any of us actually understood piracy at all like that it was a big deal no what I know is I had Star Wars I was happy <laughs> you I had... didn't really care <laughs> Jedi Knight like, Je- oh, Jedi Power Battles that was the one <laughs> Jedi, pa- that was the shit. That game, Jedi. That was so good. Oh, I was, I was fucking kick ass at Jedi Power Battles as well. Oh um, right. Um. Anyway, uh, I'm, wait. That didn't explain much about why we have the right to talk. I just explained how we knew each other. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, just uh, <laughs> uh, right. That will be episode two. <laughs> we'll, we'll think of something then. Episode two. That will be like Attack of the Clones. This is the Phantom Menace. So we. So this is the Phantom Menace. So we can be pretty shit this week. Yeah, fine. It's, it's practice. We've still got pod races, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I mean, like... Dave, don't compliment the Phantom Menace, Dave. God, come on! <laughs> no, Dave. I, my opinion of you is already pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> now you've complimented the Phantom Menace. I've got, there's nowhere else to go, Dave. You can only go up from here, Dave. What's wrong so. with pod races, don't we? Dave. We've not exactly. got time. We've, Dave, we've not got time, mate. <laughs> you've got to go at two. So. <laughs> that's fine. It'll be at least four hours of... <clears throat> fire like could spill at fucking pod racing but we haven't got time <laughs> no actually the pod racing scene is probably one of the better scenes in the film there Still we go that's all I needed let's move on now no, but you, that's not saying much <laughs> so it's one of the better I scenes I can sleep tonight now though I can sleep a happy man I can hear myself out of someone's speakers but yeah I think it's you Josh probably well thanks for that right <clears throat> should we should we actually just should we just do some gaming news? See what's going on. Uh, are we not going to explain? No, I don't think so. <laughs> just no. we're, right, we're into games. We like gaming news. That's why we're talking about it. Oh, and also we've all got microphones. That's what qualifies us to do a podcast. <laughs> Pretty much is. We've got <laughs> yeah, we have and, Skype uh, and a microphone. We've got Skype, a microphone. We've also we all each of us knows at least two other people as well. Which is yeah, pretty. That, that can help. Yeah, I, I know you and Dave. And I know you and Josh. Yeah, exactly. So, in a way, it's an ideal scenario. Try right. Let's get down to let's get down to business. 
big news. Who's got? Who wants to start with big news? Anyone got any big news that's gone on the last sort of week or so, or just ongoing news they want to talk about? Yeah, I'll start. Go then. Actually, I've got some big news first, Josh. Oh, okay. This is this is more personal news. I've actually shaved my head this week. Oh. So my hair. Real? Yeah. I thought I'd just warn you both because next time you see me, you'll both be like, "Who's that?" <laughs> It's got Max's face, but no hair. <laughs> so I just thought I'd warn you guys. You're going to look a bit neo-Nazi then. Well, I mean, to be fair, all of the swastika tattoos I had kind of did that already, so... True. That was... But we should, you should have laughed at that. You don't not laugh at that. <laughs> you awkward laugh silence. At thing. We'll be Who like, laughs at Nazis? Shit. Come on. <laughs> That's <laughs> insensitive. <laughs> I'm allowed to not laugh at that. Anyway, that was the news, Josh. Tell us. Tell us. I'm intrigued. Probably cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, Josh. What's your news? What you got? All right, so uh, how bad do you think Ubisoft have put people over by delaying Watch Dogs? Oh, no. That's uh, the crew, isn't it? The crew? This, uh, yeah, and no, so, uh, yeah, the crew are now Drive Club as well, but that's not uh, Ubisoft. You must be, as a, in the gaming industry, you must be flipping shit. I, I'm fun Stop. hilarious because I haven't pre-ordered the PS4 <clears throat> but in America the company is like in a riot trying to solve this shit and um <laughs> but professionally of course and, <laughs> yeah 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 to put it in sort of the best terms you can yeah <clears throat> and it seems that uh, one of the company's target has actually cancelled everyone's PS4 pre-orders that had a Watch Dogs bundle Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. What are you saying? At your store. No, say at Josh's store, what are you saying that um, someone has made like like, like hundreds of phone calls to get people on that bundle? And yeah. Now they're not going to get it at all. She had like a, uh, a 30 page booklet to make calls from for uh, Watch Dogs pre orders or something like that. Well, I mean, you know that Ubisoft shares of. Plummeted like two percent. Yeah, they've they've just won straight down. It was it's a disaster. Honestly, I'm. It's one of the biggest like fuck ups in the gaming industry from a business standpoint. Mm. Like I, I don't mean like you know that you can say things like oh EA uh, the servers for um, <laughs> any EA game, <laughs> but. <laughs> You know, like, uh, what was it? Um, SimCity mostly, I guess. Yeah, SimCity, yeah. All, all those kind of things. You can say those are fuck-ups, but those are technical. But they, they came uh, straight out and said, but sorry, here's a free this is just This is just bad business, and, and, and it's obviously businessmen not communicating properly with the developing staff. Well, it happens, really, every console launch, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah. GTA well, Online, yeah, that was a big one yeah. as well. Yeah, you know, GTA Online was nowhere near as bad as this, though. It wasn't, but they still, like, yeah. no one could but play it, it not, for the first few like days. But it's not like it lost money because of it. This is like you already bought the game. It can't. Yeah, be but this is this is like it's not just Ubisoft that have fucked up. That like Ubisoft have screwed up. Sony, they've screwed up every person who was selling Watchdogs and developers taking pre-orders for it. It's it's huge. It's such a big deal, and it's not like they've del- delayed it by like a week or a or a couple of months. It's delayed <laughs> like four or five months at but least. <clears throat> do you think the worst? The worst thing that I I possibly heard from it though was that people are actually just cancelling their orders altogether because of it. Which I actually so, I mean, Sony are actually going to lose an awful lot of money from it, not just from the Solus bundle, but just like going completely. Well, I mean, to be fair, at least it, it's like Microsoft are also losing out from it. So it's not like I I mean I don't know if Microsoft uh, I know there is an Xbox One bundle of Watch Dogs. Yeah. By the way, when you type, we can just hear. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. Actually, probably not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, like I know there's a special Watchdog bundle specifically for the UK. Yeah. It's for. Um, well, I mean, I think there's one all over the place because it is. Well, no, but there's, there's like a, there's like a specific thing for the UK. I thought you might know more about it. I know there's a an Xbox One and a PlayStation 4 one universally, but there's something special about the uh, the PS4 one for the UK, so Sony is, like, pretty particularly pissed. Although Ubisoft is, like, going, oh, no, me and Sony, we're, we're still in love, but Sony hasn't said anything, so <laughs> I don't know if there's something going on there. But, yeah, it's, it's been a really big disaster, really, really big. Um, <clears throat> and, I mean, Watch Dogs as well, 
um, was kind of a big risk anyway to invest in a new IP because nobody invests in new IPs anymore. So to make a new IP into a AAA kind of launch title is kind of big. I mean, it, it was kind of big for Ubisoft anyway because they did say that they wanted every single game franchise they had going to be movie-worthy and they were eventually going to make it into a movie franchise as well. So to have something like Watch Dogs, which was... To have some quite, big hopes for. I mean, quite oddly, uh, when the Spin Cell Blacklist came out, yeah. at our midnight launch, we had Watch Dogs as a demo. Yeah, yeah. And that was how many months? Like, over a month ago? No, that, that was... More than that, it was about two months ago now. Quite a while. And if they had that ready then, then... I, I mean, they're not, I don't think they've said anything after I don't see if it's some, like, major bug or what or delayed it as much, but... What I've seen I mean, of it so far, it looked pretty done. Like, look good. What I think the problem is, is there's obviously some sort of... <clears throat> I, I'm guessing either Ubisoft have panicked and, and pu- pulled it back because they don't think it's good enough, um... Or what's more likely is the development team and the PR team aren't talking, and the PR team's gone off and set all this shit up like bundles and things. Um, and the development team's just gone, it's not, it's nowhere near ready. You know, we, we can't release it yet. And uh, yeah, that, I mean, I'm guessing so. I mean, I like Ubisoft as a company. It's not like it's Ubisoft don't have that reputation that other uh, game developers have. Company. Yeah, not, not naming any names. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, they don't have that same reputation for really negative conduct. So, uh, like, if this had come from... Well, I don't think this would come from EA, because I think EA would just release a half-made game, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, do you know what I mean? I think they would, or they would just hire loads of staff and force them to work overtime until they died <laughs> to get it done. I don't think they would do something like this. So it's really... It's kind of tarnished the reputation for um, Ubisoft when otherwise they've got a pretty good. Well, I mean, like not not solid, but compared to other AAA. I don't I don't think they could tarnish the relationship in a way because they they do have that standing record of being good to the distributors, they're being good to the dis, uh, the developers. They do have that kind of good guy Ubisoft record. Yeah, yeah. I think but it, it's. It, I think it's still kind of a black spot. Well, this this may be more of a kind of perfectionist kind of thing. They may just want to get not kind of rush it out there. They may want to make it a perfected product, so they're not getting all that kind of bad rush. Well, I, I suppose, in a way, <coughs> all publicity is good publicity. So, in a way, I mean, people will probably want the game more now because it's just it's being heard about. There's all this desire, drama around it. So, in a way. It probably has stirred up a lot more interest in the game, probably. You know, it's become notorious now a little bit. Yeah, it's pushed back day one properties have you majorly, like, completely. But the uh, game is still going to sell, like, really well. There's no doubt about that. that the game is still going to do really well. I think, it, I think it, the game itself <coughs> will do better off the back of this. Um, but it's still what, what, if they, what if they make more money not selling it with the bundle? Hmm. Uh, that, well, Conspiracy. That, well, the, the they'll probably will still sell it in a bundle when it comes out. But it will miss the Christmas rush, which is big. They will make more. Bu- they will make more money selling as a bundle because they'll get like money from Microsoft for putting it in the bundle. So, I guess but so, the yeah. bundle sales guarantee sales of your game. All right. Yeah. So we've got a bit of uh, lighter news now. A bit of what news? A lighter news. Oh, we said lion news. <laughs> a bit of lion. A lion's broken into EA like Canada or something. Oh no! Oh no! That'd be my dream come true, did you say? <laughs> no, no, come on. Um, no, apparently in an Xbox uh, Live survey, 3% of users don't approve free games. What? So 3% of users on Xbox Live don't like the Games for Gold system. Oh, well, okay. Not the games that are coming out for it, but the fact that you get system free system. games. Yeah, no, I, I don't either. I've, I've always said... Um, Th- like, like it's like Steam sale as well. It, it devalues games. It devalues the gaming industry. It makes things worth less money. It makes it. It means it, it kind of it puts money into the hands of the publishers and not hands of the developers. It devalues. De- 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 you are unraveling the universe right now. You're Jewish and you're saying three things are bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I don't even know where to turn right now. The universe is. <laughs> I don't know if you could. I don't know if you could put that bit of 
blatant anti-Semitism into the podcast. Oh, come on. It's, <laughs> it's Max. It's okay. It's, <laughs> uh, they'll learn to realise it's okay. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. It's... Um, it's pretty. It is, but I love Steam Sales so much. Steam Sales are the best. Yeah, no, I, mean, I love Steam Sales, but it's Santa Claus. I want Steam Sales. It does, but at the end, it's it's not so much. Well, the thing is, Steam Steam Sales. It doesn't take away the value of a game. All it's doing is the uh, the distributors kind of saying, "Look, we're gonna put these games at a lower price for like a few days." and we'll get the money from elsewhere. And then as soon as it comes out, they go back up. It's not like when they go down in price on Steam, everywhere's <coughs> like, oh no, we need to decrease the value of these games quickly. It gives them a lot of resales. Like, it's like, isolated. Well, no, I mean, it, it, in my opinion... Months will sell loads of copies, what, which they wouldn't the do normally. Is, a lot of me, personally, and pretty much everyone I know, I don't know about you two, but most of us don't spend any money on Steam unless there's a sale. We just wait for the Steam sale. And then we go really? ape shit. <laughs> so it's kind of... Low skins. <laughs> yeah, that's, all of my money goes on lull skins and Steam sale. No, I don't spend that much on the Steam sale anymore. But it's like uh, pe- people just wait for the sales. <coughs> people go, do you know what? I do want this game, but if I wait a month, I could get it for quarter the price. To be fair, that's true. I'm not as big on single player games as I used to be. Like I generally just play multiplayer games now, unless yeah. they're on sale. Yeah, sure. I still want to play like like the new Tomb Raider. I got like Hitman for like five pounds. Like yeah. that's amazing. I wouldn't no, have bought I it just, I, no I mean, like, I'm not going to buy any games until uh, Christmas when in the store that Josh works in, they will sell, like, the big game for half price for a week. Oh, like, yeah. Whatever, no, that mean Splinter Cell, when it came out about a week and a half after, was on sale for 19.99. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, do you remember when uh, Skyrim came out? The Christmas we both worked at the same... Yeah. We both worked there together. Well, not in the same store, but... Uh, when Skyrim came out, we was we had a week where Skyrim was on sale for twenty quid, and we went from selling the week was wasn't on sale. We sold say like just for scale, this is the actual amount. Say we sold twenty, and then in the week where it went on sale, we sold about four hundred. Just in comparison to the amount, it wasn't literally that much, but it was insane. You know, bringing we it up for got, scale brings the people in that are kind of um and iron about the game. They don't know whether they'd like it or not. So they're gonna just if they get, uh, with a game like Skyrim, I'm not quite. I'm not convinced. With AAA titles, I don't believe in that. I don't think there's people who were hard. Like with a AAA title, you know all the information about it in advance. I you know what ham- the game is. Yeah, but I don't go ham on AAA titles. I don't get a AAA. <laughs> I don't go ham. <laughs> exactly. Nor do I. I, I don't either. But what I'm, but the thing is, when we work in the industry, we know a little bit more than the average customer in some ways. You know what I mean? We're a bit more savvy, maybe. I don't know. But I, I find that people just majority of people who come into a game store to buy games just buy the AAA titles. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't come in and buy generally yeah the, the smaller releases. They just buy the AAA ones when they come out. So I, I guess I don't really know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I've just drifted off from a point. Okay. You, think, you, you get where I'm going with this? I think here's, here's definitely a, a point there. Yeah. Here's yeah. a topic you've been waiting for, then Max. Okay. What do you guys think about Majora's Mask, first of all? Uh, I like Majora's Mask. I know where you're going with this. I like Majora's Mask a lot. <laughs> I like Majora's Mask, but Ocarina of Time was still the first one I had, so that was what still like the one for me. What I like about Ocarina and Majora's is, like, Maj- Ocarina of Time, people were like, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit too easy for a Zelda game. Yeah. And with Majora's Mask, Nintendo went, okay, <laughs> how's this for fucking easy? <laughs> Fuckers and just pushed out this game that was uh, really tough. Right uh, in there. I, th- I think for the generation, one of the hardest games of its type, for sure. I mean, a lot of people have been pestering the Zelda creator about a Majora's Mask remake from the 3DS. And his single reply was, the only reply that she had, <laughs> was to play A Link Between Worlds and find out. Now, of course, that just sounds like a kind of greedy little scam saying, oh, is they play Majora's Mask? No, no, I don't feel... Like, I don't think... the ja- like, If EA had said that, I'd go, yeah, it's a greedy scam. But if a Japanese <laughs> a bit less... 
No, I don't think I don't think being in the Zelda franchise, you don't need to say that. They know it yeah. was Zelda. I mean, people. Well, the ones who want Majora's Mask will get that as well. That brings me on to something I was going to say. You know, since the Zelda game was released, Wii U sales in the UK have gone up 685. I know. I saw. I mean, really? Yeah. Six hundred eighty. Oh my god. <laughs> we so. Do you know what I mean? The, the Zelda game. It's irrelevant. It's like Sorry, Josh. We sold out of Ganondorf for Wii U's about twice already. Yeah, it's, it's insane. We're just yeah, going through it like wildfire. But, um, I mean, the main point through it is, of course, yes, he's saying there's going to be hints. To the thing is, they can release whatever they want, and just, if it's got the Zelda name on it, people will buy the console just for that. Well, that well, that wasn't that shown in Twilight Princess. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I, the only reason I ever had any interest in the Wii was for Twilight Princess. Exactly, I mean, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd Skyward Sword. It wasn't an incredible game. Skyward Sword was better tenfold, but... Oh, no, I like Twilight Princess. I do like Twilight Princess. I, I just got fed up with Midi really quickly. <laughs> really? I fucking love her. I think she's awesome. Um, anyway. The thing is, right, I <laughs> I hate about Zelda. Like, what, not what I hate about Zelda. I didn't realise when I was a kid, Zelda's a creepy game. It is. It's I a mean, really creepy franchise. I didn't realise it until I was about 20... Four, <laughs> so like this year, I didn't realize how creepy Zelda actually is. Like it's yeah, not. Like, I was. I've got the uh, th- the HD version oh, on my 3DS you, now is... of Ocarina of Time, and before like, oh, it saved the princess, but no, she's actually being like properly kidnapped and shit. Like, <laughs> this ain't cool. <laughs> that's not what I meant, Dave. That's not. No, but that's cool. what happened though. That is it. Like that's what happened at the start. So you're saying you're not, not, sorry. Well, so Dave is like thinking of the impact of kidnapping on her family or something. I don't know. That's not like, what I was getting. The creepy she happened. The creepy okay, okay, happened. In Ocarina, you've got what, a Josh, creepy uh, ginger uh, old man creeping on... With a massive the nose. Set. His nose is huge. <laughs> God, there's, a, there's an old ginger guy with a big nose. Some sort of Scottish man. <laughs> he does look Scottish, to be fair. Ganon. Oh, hi, it's Ganondorf. Hey, it's Ganondorf. <laughs> Where's my haggis? Right. Um, but, yeah, like, have you guys seen the creepy pasta of Majora's Mask? No. I, I might, like, wherever, wherever this goes up, I might link to it, because it's a story uh, someone made on Creepypasta or something, or one of those sort of sites, uh, about somebody who bought uh, a haunted copy of Majora's Mask. And it's really creepy and really well done. It's obviously fake. Um, but it's really well done. It's really genuinely quite creepy. Uh, and, it re- and, and when I saw that, it, it creeped me out a lot. But then I realised afterwards that Zelda's creepy anyway. Like, it's a creepy series of games. And Majora's Mask was the first game, I think, where I realised how creepy it was. And Twilight Princess carries that on. I've not played enough of Skyward Sword, to be totally honest with you, to actually know how creepy that is. But, um... What was the... What was the fucking GameCube one? Um... Wind Waker. Wind Waker, yeah. That wasn't too creepy. Uh, that, was, that was pretty interesting. That, that's the thing that we... Like, art style alone. Yeah, really really liked, I really liked uh, Wind Waker. I really liked the art I want, style. I want a Wii U for the HD version. That looks really nice, actually. I that's want a Wii U anyway. Um, that's, some, that's one of my wild cards, actually, about the Wii U. So we'll leave that for now. <laughs> um, All right, anyway. The, yeah. the, the place I was originally intending to take this conversation, I, this is why I said it's a, something you've been wanting to get into. Yeah. Um, the Zelda and Luigi 3DSs. <laughs> right. I, I know, I know. Now, this is... This, you're bringing this up because this is... There was an argument about to break out prior to this. <laughs> to the podcast. The Josh said, just save it. So... Now, I said... Who would... Why would anyone want a Luigi product? And I said, I, I like Luigi K... No, I think that is because, Dave, I think that's because you identify yourself, Dave, as a sidekick. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'm the Mario. I think Josh is Luigi. I think you're sort of... No, I'm just so mainstream right now. I think you're Waluigi. Like, you're so no. mainstream. I'm you're so Waluigi, Dave. I'm <laughs> you do look a bit like Luigi, though, Dave. How? <laughs> I think if you grew a moustache... I don't have a moustache. My nose is not that big. It kind of looks like... I don't wear green, picture, Dave. What? It looks like you have a moustache in your picture. It does. Like, you can't see anything else. It's like, the beard's not there. It's just yeah, but I also get sort of, like, boxy in my picture. Yeah. You so, you know, whatever. Boxy? What? Life is over. It doesn't really matter. I've given up. No, wait, sorry. Boxy I just lost. In... I lost life. Boxy is in the, the girl. As in, hi, my name is Boxy, yeah. 
How do you look like Boxy? I don't know, but... Oh, he, you know he was Dutch, so I don't do know, know if it really counts. You know I think I see it a bit now. Boxy's now a dude with a moustache. Yeah. Every time I was on the call, we were with Luke, it was like, hi, my name I, is Boxy. I said, Boxy. <laughs> this, is, this is completely irrelevant, but I used to know a guy called uh, Dave Box. <laughs> That's my story, Dave Box. Mind blown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind blown. Anyway, like... I don't know why, like, on Mario Kart and stuff, I like Luigi and Yoshi on, like, Double Dash. That was, like, my team. They were my boys. <laughs> I, I've never been a big uh, Luigi fan. Uh, I, and I think, like, I, I don't know why, it just feels like he's the B team. Do you know what I mean? He's it's the like, unsung hero it's, of Mario. Like, what are you saying? No, like, he's Mario's right. not a one like, team. I get to be player one, oh, I'm Luigi. I guess it's because I'm older than you guys. I actually played an NES when an NES was a new console. Yeah, I played it when I was about 16. Like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, when I was a kid, if you were Luigi, it was like, fuck, I didn't get to be player one. It was bad to be Luigi. I see, I, yeah. like, I like Tails and Sonic well, as well. Was, I don't know. It wasn't just your kind of timeline, <laughs> your timeline, where, um, <laughs> where my timeline, I'm like, it, I'm AD. Being Luigi and being <laughs> player two has always been uncool. And the I think Hell, the only time Luigi. that actually changed was when games like uh, Super Smash Brothers <laughs> and uh, Luigi's Mansion came around. Because oh, that's, that's the only time when it was a great game. Spotlight. It wasn't bad, Luigi's Luigi Mansion. Luigi was a good game. Luigi's the thing Mansion. is, though, like, I, I just... Uh, I don't know. I just... I, I don't know. I just think people are going to want... like, Are people ever going to buy the special edition Luigi 3DS XL? If you really want a 3DS XL, are you really going to go, like, oh, there's a Zelda one. Fuck, there's a Luigi one. Yeah, I'm in there. I just, I don't know. If I was going to get a 3DS XL, I'd get a 3DS XL. Well, I've got to get a new one. X. Do you know why I've got to get a new one? Oh, nice. I, I've heard the rumours, Josh. It was yeah. on Prime. Beach. My, yeah. They did a dramatic reconstruction. They, they I, I played Brianne. <laughs> they they should have. <laughs> <laughs> God, Brianne was played by Mike Tyson. Yeah. Um, no, it's um, my 3DS was stolen. Yeah, from McDonald's. Now, I said to you at the time, well, not at the time, I said to you now, or the other day, what were you doing in McDonald's with anything of value? The most expensive thing you should bring into McDonald's is the food that you buy. Um, you don't bring that into man. <laughs> so, do you know what I mean? Like, that's, the, that's the thing you should have in McDonald's. I went to McDonald's today, what did you do? I took the I mean, you should never have anything in McDonald's that's worth more value than the meal you're eating. I... I yeah. know, I just, I'd literally just finished work, and usually I have to wait about an hour or so for Rianne to finish, because she likes me to walk home with her and stuff like that. And um, it just, it just turns, it just turned into a bad situation very quickly. <laughs> what, what? What happened then? You left the crap bag on the floor. No, I didn't. Not on the floor. It was on the table, and I went to the toilet. And when I came back, it's gone. Did Rianne see it? Rianne was there. She didn't see it get taken, but she saw it on the table. Well, she that wasn't worse. Trusty wasn't... for all you know. Someone had gone, oh, empty bag, I'll clean that away. Oh, but if you, seriously, if, if you worked in a shop and someone turned in a 3DS, you'd just fucking have it, wouldn't you? Probably. The staff would have it, they wouldn't. Yeah. I, I don't know, maybe I'm being really harsh to McDonald's staff, but if I worked in a shop... Rianne like, used to work there. <laughs> I used to work there. Okay, I better not be able to that. <laughs> no, I, I'm not BM. I, I have friends who work at McDonald's. It's not. I'm not having to go at people who work at McDonald's. I'm just saying, like, even then, if someone came in and said, "Oh, have you got my 3DS?" I'd be like, "Well, how, how can you prove it's yours?" Do you know what I mean? It would just be drama. I'd just turn it over to the police if I wasn't going to keep it. We can always say <laughs> what's in the simple no, thing. Like, it's like when someone uses a phone at work. Like, someone says, "Oh, has someone uh, handed an iPhone? What one?" And they say, "Like, oh, a white one." Like, that's clearly not your phone. That's there. not like, enough information. That is my phone, though. Like, if you can unlock it, if you can tell me what the code is to unlock it, you can have it right now. But so at the like, end of uh, the day, I do. Three, two, it, one, does, no. it does sound like a bit of a long shot for someone to go to a random McDonald's desk and say, "Has anyone handed in a 3DS?" I mean, it's no one's going to do that. Just yeah, I, I I know, but you know what I mean. Even then, if, if someone has seen it, yeah, who knows? Well, we were sitting next to like three little chubby kids. So we probably e- e- either way, Josh. I hope you've learned your lesson. Don't ever trust McDonald's. <laughs> I like to think one of them kids just to rub it in. It's sitting there on Pokemon, releasing. Dave, all of them. that is Dave. That is BM. Dave, oh. that is not acceptable. Do you know what? Actually, I hope it's justice. The kids playing on 
uh, this is a, this is a, this is me segueing into the next topic. I hope the kids play in Pokemon on the 3DS, and then he saves the game, goes to load it again. Oh, it's save bug. He can't play anymore. <laughs> Lumios. I hope that's what happens. Yeah. So that's the other big news this week. Uh, game break. I don't know if it's this week, but you know this couple of few days. Uh, game breaking Pokemon bug. <clears throat> you guys heard about that? I've yeah. heard a little bit. Obviously, it's, gosh, about it. it's the outer ring of Lumio City. Um, no, that's Lumio... been it for me. I haven't played well, it. Lumio City is just this big city you're always made to walk through, and it's the most confusing place in the world. It's literally like um, it's like a wheel and spokes pattern to go through the city. So you've got the outer ring, and then you've got loads of spokes. circular city with the center through. as well, like pass into the middle. And um, and yeah, it's just. It's a massively confused city, but if you save it in the outer ring of the city, which is a massive area, then you have a good chance of having your save file corrupted and deleted. Wait, yeah, you yeah, actually, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, actually I'm actually loading my DS up now because I have saved it there. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm not even joking. This, this is live. This uh, is live footage of it. This is this is a, a live crash. Oh, I missed I missed the Zelda sound at the start. Sorry. Yeah, that's one thing. The. Uh, when it says, like, press start to play, you press it, it goes, Dling! it's like, the next sound should be the opening on Zelda song, like, in Ocarina of Time. It's that exact sound clip, I swear. Just shut up, Dave. <laughs> no, okay, I think we're all right, we're all right, we're running around. You, 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 so, you, Dave, Dave, you didn't get the bug, so Dave is fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, um... Now, something has just caught my eye. I don't know if you've heard about this, but this is something I want to talk about as my kind of wild card. Um, is I want to have a little chat about esports. Okay. Just a little thing about esports. Because I don't know if you guys know much about esports as a whole. <clears throat> I know you guys, like, vaguely follow LOL. Yes. But not as closely as I do, because, you know, it's, it's a big thing for me, esports. I used to be in esports myself, so. Um, now, what has been noticed the trend over the last couple of weeks is a lot of Korean StarCraft 2 players, and, you know, StarCraft 2 or StarCraft in general was the dominant uh, eSport for a long time. Yeah. A lot of the really big Korean StarCraft players have ditched, have quit over the last couple of weeks. Well, yeah, it's, it was taken out of MLG, so that's bound to happen. Yeah. Days. I'm surprised but it's been this long. I, no, I think we all know that, that the reason eSports is falling apart is because of riots, because of LCS. They've, they've invested so much fake money into uh, LOL as an eSports that the other gaming companies can't invest all of that fake money in their esports, and it's fallen apart basically. So no one can no one can draw up the same interest. Dota 2 is kind of struggling along, but really Dota 2 is kind of just riding on LOL's success. They, yeah, they did all right, but that's only when uh, they only stream tournaments the days LOL don't. It's like, no, no, <laughs> they no, no, they do, they do stream some on the same days. Uh, and they, they don't get half, but they don't they don't stream that often. I mean, but w- now one of the big things that happened is Blizzard bought. I, IPL yes the IGN Pro League uh, Blizzard bought all of the assets for that uh, and then they haven't done anything with it and a lot of people thought they were going to turn Hearthstone into a kind of esports I don't know if you guys have played Hearthstone I've played a lot of Hearthstone I've and I don't, it, yeah. I don't see Hearthstone it's not, of... it's not an MLG game is it it's not no, it, it's, 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 the games are too short there's not enough visual stimulus to really get people interested. Even so the deck it's a, it's a fun game. game. For that. Well, yeah, it's a fun game, but there's no way it could be a competitive uh, esports. At least, at least not on the scale of LOL. No. You could have little tournaments and things, but it's not nearly on the same scale. Um, but this week, Blizzard have um, made an announcement. I know it's really an announcement, but uh, you guys know Blizzard All-Stars was their kind of Dota game? Yes. Now, they've renamed it now to Heroes of the Storm. Yeah. Now, there's a little animation for it as well. I don't know if you guys have seen the animation. We'll put a link to it, maybe, if people haven't seen it. Um, And basically, uh, it's like... you know, it's, It's clear that they... I mean, originally it was called Blizzard Dota... And then they changed that. So it seems to me like they're trying to give it Heroes of the Storm is a more professional sounding name than Blizzard All Stars. Well, it's a more attractive sounding name. Yeah, yeah, but it Definitely. sounds like it sounds to me like they're just going to go straight into the Dota clone. I, I, 
I feel like I really want to bring out kind of a rising issue with um, with Blizzard buying IPL at the moment. What's that? Apparently, from what I read on Reddit, um, one of the StarCraft this? 2 uh, <coughs> professional players wasn't paid after winning IPL. After winning an IPL. Well, I mean, I don't know. We can't really discuss that because we don't know. Do we? I don't. I don't want to cast aspersions that anyone owes anyone money because we just we can't prove that, can we? So I know what you mean. I hear that sort of all the time. Whole companies, Blizzard couldn't pay it. That's not. Well, but it's not Blizzard. Thing. It's not Blizzard who couldn't play. It's IGN. IGN's debt. Yes, it is IGN. Oh, I guess yeah, that makes sense. But then again, I don't want to say it's IGN's debt because we don't know. <laughs> so I don't want to. Let's probably shouldn't talk about that too much, just because. <laughs> I don't want us to be like, because for all we know, the, the player could have made it up or he could have breached his contract and that's why he didn't get paid. It could be anything, couldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'd probably leave that. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to say anything gets in trouble. Um, say it's safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. We don't it's, like get the, it's like the whole TPA cheating at the last world, or it was TPA when like, they were looking oh, at the load of whatever. Shut the fuck up. No, same thing, though. No one really knows. No, that was TPA, though. That was. Um, what were they called? Uh, Zubu Frost. Yeah. Oh, was it? Sorry, yeah. They got fined uh, like 20% of their winnings or something for it. But uh, Chaos of TSM said, I'd pay 20% of my winnings if I got to look at the enemy screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was quite witty. Uh, although I hate Chaos. Um, <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's a good guy. I'm sure he's a decent guy in real life. Anyway. Um, so anything else? Do you, th- you guys want to talk about the news? There's a few... Things still kind of floating off, but I don't know if they're worth talking about. I've got more kind of like topics, not more like not news. So I, just, I just mean, is there anything kind of big in the news right now you guys want to discuss? I think we've covered the massively major ones. The massively major ones. Massively major ones. We, well, we've covered all of the ones that I've heard about. <laughs> so, um, actually, one thing actually kind of I mean, the, not really one, big news, but like actually, there's probably more of a topic again. Maybe we should bring up later or what? Okay. That's about, it's just basically about the um, the league legacy skin thing because everyone's talking about that shit that I know of. That's not really like. New that's not a thing to talk. It's more yeah. of a kind of discussion. That's, that's, that's what, I, I don't know. I think going into like the mechanics of specific games is almost too niche because it will yeah. you know scare people off who don't play league. Then it's like twenty minutes. Yeah, it's not league <laughs> anymore. I feel like, I feel like if we get into league, talking about league, we just won't do anything else. That's a fair uh, point. That is quite possible. That's a void. Yeah, yeah. We should avoid talking about uh, as well. So, uh, you guys, nothing else? Nope. Big enough to talk about? Uh, one thing, I don't know if it's still... I mean, it's, it was this week, is that Microsoft have said... Um, I don't know how true this is, but Microsoft has said that all Xbox One games will have dedicated servers um, offered, in inverted commas. Yeah, um, I know Call of Duty and Battlefield are getting them. Yeah, t- uh, Titanfall as well has been... Con- <clears throat> uh, Titanfall looks fucking awesome. It, it does look... We're, we're all getting an Xbox One to play Titanfall. <laughs> Unless it's on... Is it on another... I don't know if it's just on... Is it on PS4? Uh, no, um, no. Right, we'll, get, right, we'll get Xbox One then. Happening. <laughs> whatever whatever Titanfall is on, we're all getting that. <laughs> Because Titanfall looks awesome. That, it that's look insane. Relevant, though. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, this. Yeah. So now I don't know. That's quite big. That's quite big news. I don't. Th- it's one of those bits of news that I think most people won't really think anything of. That. No, I think. I think in terms of designated servers, and especially the amount of players yeah. that can be online, which was yeah. limited by the server space is massive it, it, it's the big definition between online gaming on the PC and online gaming on the Consoles. console yeah it is the definition it's the amount of players the designated servers and a dedicated servers that's what I said dedicated you said designated <laughs> I meant dedicated yeah go on um, but the servers are a massive a massive impact, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And well, but even then, one of the things I want to bring up is, you know, usually if a game isn't like Call of Duty or Halo or whatever, after like a month, it's usually dead online. 
Yes, so much. it's usually that's it, dead. So I want to talk about a lot of the games we're seeing being really promoted, like um, Destiny, like Titanfall, mm-hmm. are these big MMO style games where they're almost all pushing the online aspects. Well, I mean, um, there, there's but no, but what I mean is, I think there's going to be more games. It seems like to me there's going to be more games that aren't going to die after a month. But I think it's going to make all of those games that That's do what they hope, die. Yeah, they really hope a, that. Well, no, I, I think genuinely they're, they're pushing it so much. I think it will be a success. I think people will. I think almost console games. That'll be why people play them soon. It's definitely moving towards that. I mean, it, it seems to me that a lot of games, as well for the next generation, are just going for the online aspect, like um, Sunset Overdrive, for example. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sunset Overdrive's a big one. I mean, I haven't heard any news in it for a while, but in the way that it's done, you've got the drop-in, drop-out co-op all the time. Yeah, but it's like, you know, it's the same with Destiny as well. You know, there's there's just this constant drop-in, drop-out aspect to it. But Destiny's gone even a step further, and they've incorporated it into social networking and all sorts, and iPhone apps and things. I mean, I'm really excited to see how Destiny develops. I mean, but that's, um, that's... I think Destiny is, like, my game to watch right now. I think that's going to yeah. be either a massive success or a, an epic... <clears throat> and if, if you're going on I hope it's kind of social side of things, then you've really got to look at both consoles in the way that they're integrating with Twitch TV, with YouTube, how you can upload videos at a whim whilst you're playing. I, I think it's worth saying straight away, Microsoft has a huge edge on Sony. Well, it's, it's only with the experience. I mean, we're being a bit harsh here. We're not even considering Nintendo in this conversation. And I think... I, I, mean, I like the Wii U, but we can't... I don't think the Wii U is really comparable. It's to not, because, again, like, Wii's always, always gone for the family kind of thing, haven't they, anyway? Well, I mean, even with, that, with the games, just... they, the type of games they have, how their graphics is, or how long ago they were, it was released as well, it's not even in this kind of race anymore, is it? Yeah, yeah. But I think it's in, I think it's in its own... I think it's got its own market, its own niche that it's in. It does uh, well that way, anyway. So yeah. I mean, I think that's that's yeah. So I mean, it, let's just talk my Xbox One, uh, Sony, Microsoft. Even. Have you have you come across? Well, I, I think the reason Microsoft have it already is because a Microsoft, you know, is is software. It's PCs, yeah. and Sony is hardware. So straight away, Microsoft has an edge. I mean, in what, that what, sense. what we got to do? I mean, with the company I work for, we got to go down and have a hands-on. Uh, What's the word for it? Test? Yeah, like, of, of the PlayStation 4. And one so, thing... Are you allowed to say... Are you allowed to talk yeah, about it? Yeah, we, okay. we, we were... T- I, guess it's, I guess it's so you could tell customers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the one thing that kind of massively stood out to me, apart from the remote play aspect, is the fact that at all times, the last 20 seconds or so of your gameplay is being recorded. So if you click that share button, it will upload the last 20 seconds of gameplay from you. Or you can hold it in and you can choose how long a gameplay you want to upload. That's kind of cool. I like that. Exactly. You always miss that one moment you want to tell everyone. You always miss it, don't you? Exactly. Yeah. And that, that's the exact way the rep described it. He said there's always, whenever you get that killing spree on COD or that kind of massive, awesome moment that you get in a lot of games and you don't have it recorded you will be able to press that share button and it will have it ready for you. That's pretty neat. It, exactly. It, it is like Sony's got your back there. And I mean, I haven't heard, <laughs> well, I haven't heard anything of... You're welcome. Sort of, Sony. Yeah. Yeah. Sony's just Good like a, Sony. Welcome, son. <laughs> it's just like I haven't heard anything of a similar light in terms of Microsoft. All we hear about from Microsoft, generally speaking, um, the Xbox One, I think it's fair to say, has had a, a huge amount of negative press compared to the PlayStation 4. Well, that's because uh, um, they tried bringing in a game changer, didn't they? They tried to make it the Steam. Well, let's, I mean, even then, we probably shouldn't talk about that because we'll piss off uh, <laughs> EA or something. Um, <laughs> Not quite the EA. There's nothing wrong with being the Steam console. It's a fantastic concept. It's just the fact that they brought it in too early when they don't have the trust yet. And it's it's, even, it's things it's like, though, you know, the always online. People didn't like that. Well, I mean, it, at the end of the day, it wouldn't be much different from Steam. The main difference is that people can get Steam for free. It's an option, whereas but you'd have to spend £450 to get this option in terms of Microsoft, in terms of the Xbox. The Xbox. It, it is. 
Yeah, I mean, well, I I feel like we're getting too sidetracked just into the Xbox One uh, PS4 discussion. I think actually maybe when when it's kind of coming up to the release, we should just sit down and just have a podcast just about uh, the consoles and kind of the differences between the two and stuff and launch title. Because the stuff we're talking about now is months old now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, we could just go back like, to the start of this whole Xbox One versus PS. Yeah, actually, I do. Actually, I'd actually like to look over yeah, how, think, it, how it's changed it'll... along these last few months because it's been quite a big change every now and then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, all the one eighties Microsoft have been doing, and and as did it even how much how how well did that work even like? I mean, I, 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 honestly, I mean, they've they've damage controlled it well. I think most they, of them... no, they did a good job with it. It's only people like us who really even remember that now. The average person on the street probably didn't even know about it, for starters. But yeah, I'd like to try and find numbers on how it's changed along that time, though. Yeah, absolutely. We sh- but we should sit down and go over like just the launch titles and the capabilities of each system and things like that, I think, in a future cast. But here's what to look forward to. Yeah, that's a bit of just us dangling the, uh, the future in front of you all there. Um, <laughs> oh, carrot on a stick, carrot on a stick. <laughs> carrot on a stick. Come on, you know what it I'm really. Is this still recording? By the way, I'm really worried this hasn't recorded. It it says recording, so I'm hoping. So. Okay, <laughs> if this hasn't recorded. I'm gonna go That's wait. really unnerving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so <clears throat> anything else in the news, you guys? You going to talk about? Are we are we good? We're out of new. I'm out of news anyway. I've pretty much exhausted my uh, your news space. We probably missed like a huge bit of news. <laughs> Uh, but like all the news uh, I know is when I'm like round Josh's or something. So like everything he said is what we've both known. Actually, like, wow. quite, quite a big one um, that I, I had heard about a couple. Of, well, today, and I only just thought about it now, or maybe I heard about it a couple of days ago. I don't know. But it's just really now is um, that people are, it, there's there's a cons- like a slight rumor, um, or it's it's being considered to delay Battlefield Four on the Expo and PS4. I don't know if you guys have heard this. No, I've not, no. Was that? I think... No. So, it's DICE have said... They, they, they've, they've, they've said that they... It's kind of come out about the same time as Watch Dogs, uh, the Watch Dogs news, and they've said basically it's really hard to develop the games at the same time, and, and we may have to push it back. Well, I don't know if they've even said it that firmly, but it's being considered, it's being talked about. I mean, it's, it, it's going to, in, in my opinion, anyway, it's going to end up the same way the Xbox 360 did, in the way that these consoles are going to release, and they've promised so many launch titles, I mean, 36 launch titles were promised for each co- each console. Uh, and that's, that, that's a lot. I don't think people realise that's, that's, that's a it, lot. It, is, it is a huge amount, because... But even then, we've got to take into consideration these two consoles are more complicated than any console before them. And it's, um, it's all new growth so, for the developers as well. Exactly. So th- th- they've got to develop new games for new hardware when that hardware's not finished. So, and then, I mean, this, again, this is probably something we should come back to in the actual... Possibly discussion of it. I think it, but touching on it now. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. The and point I was coming to is well, the fact that the Xbox 360 only released with about ten games. Yeah, yeah. I remember looking at the selection. I was still thinking about that. Like, what do we have? Like Project Gotham. Like, there's Cat- always oh. one city racing game, isn't there? There's always Project Gotham or something like that. That game died out, though, didn't it? Pretty much. Forza. For- yeah, Forza. Uh, Forza is going to be a release title as well. Forza Five. I'm not a big fan of racing games, but uh, I understand. Obviously, they, they want to cater for every market they can on launch. The only issue I'm finding is that a lot of the launch titles are just going to be upgradable reskins of 360 and PS3 titles. But not only of that, uh, they're, they're reskins of big 360 and PS3 titles. To be fair, though, the, the thing about reskinning... Everyone already has. Yeah. Yeah, everyone says uh, like that kind of thing, but... I think we were like I always try to remember that like how much games progress the life of the console like the first game that comes out they're probably just coming to terms with the graphics they can now do and stuff like that well no like, I the just, physics it, and stuff I think, is obviously still cool I think it's more they just go they, they don't even change it it's just this is it being rendered by a better machine it, well, it, it's very rarely any actual massive amount of work's gone into it in so all honesty not up. naming names but <clears throat> some of the titles I've seen do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they, they do look very. So straight away, what I want to mention is 
there have been rumours, is what I'll call them, that Microsoft is having any game... Well, I mean, it's not even Microsoft doing it, but Microsoft have apparently had a hand in it. It's that PS4 versions are being gimped to the Xbox One capabilities. Now, this obviously happened with the PS3, when there were multi-platform games... They were kind of limited to what the Xbox 360 could do, not what the PS3 did. And that's, I think, why the PS3 had a kind of rocky life, start, life span. Because a lot of the games weren't made for a PC, for, the, for a, um, a console of that power. You know? I guess so. Yeah, being on Blu ray alone, you can't just put that on a normal disc, then, can you? Yeah, well, what I mean yeah. is that they, they, they had to develop them for the weaker console. And yeah. I think that's still going to be an issue for the PS4. But apparently Microsoft... I, again, this is... Could be, this could be just nonsense. Well, I mean... Reddit conspiracies. But people are saying that Microsoft are saying... Or at least people are doing it. Whether Microsoft has a hand in it or not, I have no idea. And I don't want to say it's true, but this is certainly something people are thinking. I mean... Good I, I think this is where Rockstar had the right idea. Rockstar did say the reason they weren't going to release GTA V on the next-gen consoles is because they wanted to start from scratch when they go over to the next-gen. They want to make it so they use all the console's power to bring the best game possible to that console. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Uh, Rockstar have always been pretty sensible as a developer. They've never been, like, just, you know, one of those companies who's just going to shit out crap games and stuff at a rate of knots. They, they do it sensibly. They've always taken a fairly smart approach to it, and... Clearly, it's working for them because I mean, GTA V was the you know the best selling game of all time or whatever, something like that. <laughs> so, you know, just as a little thing like that. Um, so I feel like they've certainly got the right idea. So I mean, other developers, though. I mean, I, I feel like other developers obviously have better relationships with um, Microsoft and Sony. But anyway, so. That's all the news, I think, that we want to talk about. Right? Yeah. Um, there was so should we, should we just randomly riff for a bit? Like, we all wanted kind of our own topics. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think now would probably be a decent time to kind of explain our background and things. I mean, I know it's probably going to be a little bit better for us if we do. Just so yeah. people know exactly where we come from. I mean, you did touch on the fact that you were, you well, you are an ex-professional gamer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. explain a little more about it. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go. Tell, it'll it'll, it'll make me sound like um, I don't know. It'll, it'll kind of put me. Uh, I don't, I don't want to make it seem like I'm putting myself on a pedestal or anything. I, I played games at a professional level. Shut up. What you meant? Um, I played video games at a professional level but that's not really what I'm all about I just that was just something that kind of happened you know it's not like I went out to make a career out of that and obviously as with all professional gamers when the bo- when your game is no longer a popular thing uh, or when g- changes happen to the game that you can't adjust to and you become less good at the game you fall out of it and you can't make any more money doing it and that's kind of what happened to me mm. um, you go into other things so now I'm uh, what do I do now? I don't really do anything now. I just sit about. Uh, probably going to be working for the same company as Josh this year. Hi, right, Josh. Yeah. Well, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's basically me. I, you know, I've, I've played games since I was a kid. Obviously, we we all have. I'm sure. I probably imagine anyone listening to this has played games all their life. So it's not like <laughs> that. It's not that makes me particularly special. Yeah, um, I'm a little bit older than uh, than you two, so I've got a bit more experience of, kind of, of a different age. Well, I don't know about yeah. wiser. I'm certainly a bit more drunk than you two. <laughs> That's because you're uh, drinking wine that's so early. By the way, yeah, this is you drove me to it, Josh. Th- this is at one fifteen in the afternoon. We <laughs> Max started drinking at around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Cause Can I you- go up with it? It was about 10, yeah. <laughs> uh, the reason being is I didn't get drunk yesterday, so I didn't have a hangover today. 
Um, all the more reasons to get drunk quicker to them. I had to get drunk so I'd have a bit of energy for the podcast. I did it for the team, Josh. A bit of energy. Nice. Took one for the team. Is a good guy. Yeah, I took one for go the team. Max. Yeah, go go Max. I'm just. Uh... Stop and you'll hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, like uh, I mean, um, myself, I've had quite a, <coughs> quite a bit of experience in the game and journalism sector, as well as working for uh, the company I work for. Um. I've been to conventions on press access. I've had interviews with developers and CEOs. And, um. Oh, I've CEOs, been, really? Yeah. I've. Cryptic Games. Uh, like Tesla. So I've. I've spoken to uh, quite a few. Yeah, Elder Scrolls Online, wasn't it? That was well. Players. Yeah, I got the two hour playthrough of Elder Scrolls Online, which was quite possibly the best night of my life. <laughs> really? <laughs> it, it was really good. Okay. Well, anyway, that's, we well, we can talk about that in a few future podcasts. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's not out to next year, so I've got plenty of time to to fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Oh, something that we didn't touch on. Hang on, Dave hasn't had a go yet. <laughs> that's a good point. Go on, Dave. Hi <laughs> right, right, guys. I'm Dave. Dave. Don't don't ever talk like that again, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the third time we said don't ever do something today. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not going to do it. Don't worry, I'm going to sing we're it. Eventually, we're going to run know, out of things to do that are annoying, and you'll just be. Anyway, like, I, yeah, I'm Dave. I'm really annoying, apparently. I'm. I, I, I think, think they know that for themselves now, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but, I think for me, it all began on Sega Mega Drive playing Sonic, Sonic One, and then Sonic <laughs> Tails. I like the way we and Josh were like, yeah, we were. I was in the gaming industry, and Dave. I did. I'm not done. Sonic. <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to just put it out there now. I've done nothing in the gaming industry apart from play games a lot. Dave is basically Josh's mate, who I met uh, when we were discussing at, house. at Josh's house. Yeah, well done, Dave. <laughs> uh, um, I'm doing Dave's intro for him because I'm worried Dave won't sell himself. Um. <laughs> sell me? I work in a bar. I sell drinks. Cocktails and stuff. Basically, Dave is getting Josh drunk on a daily basis. That's what happened. We needed someone to sort of lighten the mood. We needed someone who would just chirp up with a lot of shit uh, and be hilarious about it. Well, Josh not Josh the man for the job. <laughs> that's that's harsh, Dave. You should apologise to Josh. For what? Saying I'm the irritating one. That oh, sorry. I said Josh was the man for the job. No, I said Josh knew oh, the man oh. for the job. God. Sorry. Yeah, he did. He did. I, s- I said we need we need an idiot, someone with half a brain. Well, where are we going to find such a person? And then well, Dave, actually, actually, and Dave, the, idiot, the, the idiot like, of the podcast didn't happen because the first choice of that. Oh yeah, was one of Josh's friends. Yeah, yeah. now <laughs> Nate, I'm not going to name him <laughs> in case he's listening, Mr. Uh, X. Mr. X. Yeah, we were sat around having a glass of uh, like squash like a glass of cordial which is a for, people, cordial. for people who don't have cordial it's a it's you pour some like liquid in a glass and then you fill up with water and it tastes good right and we were sitting there going who's going to be the stupid one for the podcast and mr x goes i've never had a drink that i've enjoyed <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even about like how it's it, um, not even how he's it just it just, it's just how it was like i've never enjoyed a drink in my life there was it was so deadpan the way he said it. Uh, my <laughs> it little sounded face. so empty. I just turned to Josh with my mouth like open, like going, "Oh my god, we found our guy!" But we found in- Paul <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, right. Back on topic, then, Josh. You had something to talk about. Yeah. Um, it was the recent influx of pay-to-play MMO games. Now. The recent info, you mean what? A you lot of... By pay-to-play, you mean subscription-based. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> I mean, a lot of new... So you're talking, you're talking Wildstar, in particular. We're talking Wildstar, we're talking Elder Scrolls Online, we're talking Final Fantasy of Rome Reborn. Yeah. There's an awful lot at the moment. I've just come into play, new players, and they've decided to go for the subscription model. What's interesting about that is we thought the subscription model was, was going to die out. Absolutely, I mean... It, it yeah, seems so, more. because so many MMOs these days are free-to-play, and if they're not already free the microtransactions they are going over to free-to-play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, I personally, I feel that after Star Wars crashed, 
Um, there's no other way to describe how the old republic died. It was a crash. It was a crash and burn, pretty much. It was a huge <laughs> flop. It was the most expensive game ever developed at the time, and it failed massively. Now, that's partly because there were a lot of there were a lot of problems with it. I'll admit, but the big problem was it lacked features that WoW had. And if you're releasing an MMO and it's not at least as good and has all of the features and quality of life things that WoW has, if it doesn't have all of those, you will fail. I mean, it, I think a lot of the major problems that these games <coughs> do is the lack of an interesting end game. I mean, WoW's already got all the PvP set up. It's got uh, absolutely. It's got all the um, raids, all the heroics, and I think when it comes down to it, you can't ask someone. To pay well, monthly for something that's not going to give them as much as paying the same amount for something else. But even then, there's little things like dual spec. The dungeon. Yeah, that was a big deal. But to be fair, personally, popular. like. Well, Echo dungeon mode. fight, there was a big one in Star Wars. There was no, you know, you couldn't just queue for a group. That was huge. I think I remember hearing about, like, with that, like, when I play MMO, like, leveling's fine. Like, we've been playing, like, Dragon's Prophet recently and, like, with Terror and those things recently. Like, leveling's fun. But I can't level for 20 hours straight to get to the max level and without knowing what's there. And then, like, I think with the dungeon finder thing, everyone, you'll see every forum post on, like, World of Warcraft saying, oh, I, I miss the days when it was hardcore. All these noobs now don't have to go to the dungeon. The thing is, you've got to remember, is the people that. who say that, that is a min- minority. It's a very it is, vocal yeah. minority. That's what I mean. The majority of WoW players research. don't use the forums and don't talk about it. The majority of WoW players use those systems and love those systems. Exactly. So then, but then people like that, I think, read that and go, oh, well, this is what the people want, but it's not. The mistake Bioware made is Bioware listened to feedback from... from and, they, and they thought, the people giving them feedback in beta, they thought that they represented the majority, and they didn't. Not at all. And that is the mistake, I think, was made... Um, for Swotor, and I, and I and I still play Star Wars now. <coughs> uh, I think it's a really good game as a single player game. Um, <laughs> it is. It je- I, I love the old Republic games. Like I was playing. Uh, oh, absolutely. I, I played through Kotor one and two fairly recently. Well, two. I'm playing through one at the moment. Um, I really enjoyed that. And game. I, I went through it in the wrong order for some reason. Um, and after, and I had this sudden urge to finish the story, so I went back to Swotor uh, and really enjoyed it. And I think it's a genuinely really fun game. Uh, but I do understand why it failed to start with. I think it will pick up again. <coughs> I think it's worth picking up. I do think it is potentially better than WoW. And I do think it is a really solid game. But I can understand why it failed initially. Because I played it on release. Um, and there were problems. I mean, the, the, main, the main point here was that people are expecting other people to pay for a product that they don't know what it's going to give them end game, and if it does, it's not going to be as much as other more established MMOs like World of Warcraft. Well, the last the last two pay to play MMOs, big one, big ones, were Star Wars and I guess Secret World. Uh, yeah, uh, both of them went free to play. Both of them went free to play. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, fucking uh, Secret World went free to play within like three months. Really quickly, yeah. Really fast. Incredible. And Star Wars went free to play within six months. I mean, you like, I think Secret World is one of the most fun months. questing I've played. Like, the quest. Oh, like, I think the, Did you play? Have you played Star Wars, Dave? Uh, I've not played Star Wars. You know, it's free, it's free to play. You should give it a shot because it is. I probably will. I need to, really. The questing is really good. It's like. And it has, like, the conversation wheel, like Dragon Age and stuff. And yeah. Mass it's got, like. Gen- it's genuinely fun. I like it's it. It's got, like, Paragon and Renegade <clears throat> in as well. So, yeah. like. Uh, and you have, like. World. You have, like, relationships with your crewmates and stuff as well. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So I don't like. I'll say with Secret World. I played in the beta for Secret World. I'm like. I don't, have you two played Secret World much? I've or? got. Yeah. Secret. Well, my, my two old housemates. Really want well, particularly one of them loved the company who made Secret World, and she'd played all of their games. She was really excited about it. She was so disappointed when it was released because it wasn't finished. It wasn't, but I think yeah, what I liked about it was they the stepped in and pushed it out too fast because they knew it was going to flop. Yeah, they did kind of kill it. But I just I loved think, the, I the puzzle side to the quest. The puzzle quest, like where you had to like just follow the clues, were really clever. You had to go into the websites and yeah, find out, like you know, yeah. the clue was like where the leader rests and you have to find on the website for that town yeah. who the old leader was and where his burial point was and go to that and then you find a clock and have to go to the time and it was like you'll spend a long time on a quest but even though you spend like half an hour doing these puzzles you'll get a good reward for it like level wise 
Yeah, it was cool. I love that. I mean, so, there are a lot of really kind of... We're getting a bit sidetracked, though. Sorry, well, I think a, ma- a major thing to point out is there are a lot of MMOs that are coming out that do have really good ideas, like Secret Wars Puzzles, you've got World Stars customization, And I think the... But I do think the only one that has a chance of making the subscription-based uh, game plan work is Elder Scrolls Nine, and that's not because I love the Elder Scrolls series. It's simply because Bethesda have a lot of experience making single-player games, and a lot of people love Bethesda. And uh, they, but the thing is, Bioware you can, have a lot of experience, and lo- lots of people love them in the same way. Because keep in mind that Star Wars was released before Mass Effect Three, so people still love them at this point. <laughs> um, and they and it still failed. Oh. So. Well, I, I, I have to say, I have very little faith in Elder Scrolls Online. I'm I, saying that now. I really don't think it'll work. From, I think it from what I played, I have a lot of faith in it, and I do think that its fan base will carry it through. I mean, are, you, are, you allowed, it. are you allowed to talk about what you played? Yeah. Yeah. You it, it, it was a, well, we won't talk about that. We should talk about that in a future podcast in more detail, but... I, I have to say, I, I don't have any faith in any subscription-based MMO that's launching. I think it's a big mistake. It, it, it is a mistake, but at the same time, <coughs> the way... Uh, it's not something to go off, but the way Bethesda described it when they, then, when they explained why they were going for this uh, subscription model is simply they'll be able to release content, new content, a lot faster. Now, I'm going to counter that straight away. SWOTOR releases new content quite regularly. Absolutely. And they don't have... A, a, and and it'll, that's only partly free-to-play. That's only... That's only partly subscription-based. SWOTOR... Right? Exactly. So I, 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 I do reject... That. SWOTOR has a very smart microtransaction system. Yes. Yeah, They're SWOTOR's, doing it the right way. It's totally well done. Good. And I think that games should be looking to Star Wars now because Wotor probably makes good money I'm pr- I, have, I don't actually know that but I reckon it does alright because they release content for it still fairly regularly this is what I ask though because like me has not played it what would this you buy like a really clever microsystem this like, is something we're going to call a like, Max Fact it's going to be called a Max Fact what way some, when you assume <laughs> yeah, well, it's I, stick, well, it's probably you're not true. sure it's probably Max true but we don't actually know exactly there we go. So it's probably true like Dave's gay, isn't it? Probably. So Max Pack, <laughs> I guess, I don't Max know, yeah. Pack number one. <laughs> totally total owns a lot. Uh, earns a lot of money. It probably does all right. I reckon it does all right for itself because they wouldn't be. They would just let it die. I think slowly if it didn't. Uh, and they do seem to be keep. They they are pumping life into it. I actually subscribed to it this month. Oh wow. Because uh, I wanted to. I wanted to uh, get some stuff with the with the cut. Like, I wanted to buy stuff on the. Uh, the in-game trans- uh, microtransactions. What is the subscription now if it was free to play? Is it like premium kind of thing or? Well, you basically if you if you're free to play, um, you've got a lot. There's a lot of limitations on what you can do in the game, like, like even the, even like UI limitations. Like you can only have two action bars if you're free to play, and you can't have extra. Bags. It always skill caps it then, if you know. It. Well, right. kind of yeah, but there's there's limits to what you can do. Whereas if you if you bought the game. Or you've ever subscribed to it, or you bought the expansion Rise of the Hut Cartel, because there's already been an expansion for it. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I never heard of that. Um, if you bought the expansion or bought the original game when it was released, or have ever subscribed, you get what's called preferred status, which means you get slightly more than someone who's purely free. Okay, that's fair. That's fair point. Yeah. But, e- but even if you go back to free, your account is still preferred. So you still yeah, get, I'm yeah. still a... I'm pre- I was preferred, and I'm subscribing now. I'm still a founder. Yeah, I'm a founder as well. I mean, bigger founder doesn't give you that much. I was a founder. But... No, but I mean, I, I, I literally jumped on the bandwagon for a so okay, It's nice to be rewarded, because from going... Oh, did you go out and buy the Lifetime subscription version? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. No, I didn't do that. No, God, no. Oh, so you could just play now as a subscriber, then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I, I had a lot of hope in it. I, as, I, as you said before, the, the KOTOR games were fantastic. Honestly, dude, you should go back to it because it's pretty good right now. Like, it's good. It's fun. Um, but you know what I was before, though? You know about Endgame stuff? It's probably the best example for that. It's not, it's not a pay-to-play, but Guild Wars 2 was probably the best example of Endgame lacking. Guild Wars 2 was fantastic for what it was. It, it was really good. It was good, but people wanted at least a raid that wasn't one. Yeah, but 
they had the world bosses as well, which is something that not a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, MMOs do. It's, I guess not. Yeah, but not to wow be fair, I mean, but you've got to be honest though. WoW isn't built around world content, whereas Guild Wars Two was. Yeah. So it's a little bit different because it was a game built on that sort of content. Of course, it had to have world bosses. In the sense of like Rift as well, that was meant to be like world based, wasn't it? As well, generally. Oh, I don't, I, don't Rift. I, I, I didn't actually play Rift, to be honest with you. Rift was alright, it just seemed a bit slow. I was comparing to WoW though at the time. So. Yeah, it's, everything seemed slow compared to WoW, but Rift was quite slow, along with uh, Aeon. That's not oh, what that came out. Oh, the Aeon was horrible in Gamer. <laughs> Aeon was okay. I quite liked it. I like. I, I, I didn't. I, I liked that you could fly about. The yeah. flying was fun. Like that and was that blade that and was soul. A, blade and soul flying. Uh, the flying was a, was a new mechanic for an MMO. <clears throat> it's quite cool. They didn't really flesh it out enough, unfortunately. That is. Cool. That's another one I'd pay to play. Blade and soul. That is one I'm paying to play. It's like know. a stamp of approval. I am paying to play that. I haven't played it enough, so. No, it's not even out yet. There you go then. I haven't played it enough. I haven't played it at all. Is what I meant to say. Um, <laughs> I, what I mean is, I, I do, I've never even heard of it. It's so. a Made in Soul. It's a Korean yeah. MMO. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, I do know it, actually. It's currently being published for Europe and America and stuff. But I, I do know it. Like again, Mike could probably link something for it. Like the when just we talk the, just the stuff, combat and animations about, of like, that. When we talk about like you know get, get niche smaller games, we should probably like just put a link on them or something when we wherever this goes. Yeah, well, then this almost goes into the topic I was thinking about to talk afterwards. Is like me and Josh have been talking about, like you know, I'm I've ca- I'm bored of WoW by now. Like I always go back to it a little bit, but I've never got into it properly. And yeah. what is the next one I want to play? Like I don't. It's so hard to say. And there's a lot of big titles I look like coming out. Honestly, soon. Dave, you should you should give Star Wars a try. I do need to. That's one I've always like been on like the to do list. If, like, if, like, if you like the Kotor games, it's good. Like it that's does. Like yeah. Josh, Josh, how, did you get did you get to the point where you find out what happened to Revan and stuff? Yes, I believe so. Okay, cool. I won't spoil it. But, no, but, don't. No, no spoilers. We've got to have spoiler-free uh, podcast. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like... Snake kills Dumbledore. Like, <laughs> what were the... Uh, <laughs> would he die at the end? <laughs> oh, oh, shit, I've ruined the sick book. You've That's just fun. ruined... you just That's potentially ruined Harry Potter for a lot. That's ruined Toy Story as well. <laughs> he dies. Oh. I haven't seen the third... Woody dies, bro. It's happy. It happens. Oh, I'm so that. sorry. But anyway, yeah, because me and Josh are talking about like things that are coming up. Like, there's um, Blade and Soul looks amazing. Bless looks amazing. That was it. Ar- Arcade, I think it was called. It didn't. I'm not sure about combat wise, but Arcade has got loads of new ideas it's, or it, ideas they're trying out. Like you've got, Arcade you can actually commit crimes. It, it does play like Eve Online. It's basically a Second Life kind of thing. Uh, but swords and stuff. Player controlled economy, player controlled everything. There's even there's those, even those a, game, the thing is what you've got to remember is those Korean MMOs always fail hardcore in the it's, West. It's just some of the ideas they've got could work in a. I don't know if they're going to work in this because it's the first kind of time I've seen it properly try in this kind of game. But like even a player, it's a player controlled like jury in court. Like like if you have a stain on your shirt in the game from killing someone in the house, you have the stain on your T-shirt and that can be used as evidence against you in a court. But everyone will just vote everyone guilty. <coughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you'll get, you'll get no the you'll get like that producer bags so they go and troll along. But to everyone game. will do that. It's like Tribunal <laughs> in LOL. Everyone just votes guilty. But it's one of them games where the role playing servers will be where you want to be, if, even if you want to play it properly, because yeah. they'll try hopefully go with what's right. Yeah. Like the Star Wars role playing servers are pretty good. Like there's always people running around RPing and stuff. I've never really been on a role playing server properly. Uh, that's, that's like That tends to be where I hang out. Josh, stop typing stuff. <laughs> your mic goes weird when you do yeah. anyway right so any more topics because that was I kind of MMOs in general was something I wanted to chat about so we kind of covered that there There. I'm kind of happy as we are actually the only thing we didn't get a chance to talk about was that blessed you like Josh that game looks <sighs> Well, we should do we should do like an, we should do like an MMO special and like a you know <laughs> Xbox launch special and stuff in the future like well, show you trailers and stuff in, in the video I guess we could do or well, who knows? We could, you know, maybe. All right, guys. So are you are you, ha- are you are you calling podcast over, Josh? I am. And uh, calling uh, podcast over. Give me a second, then. Uh, well, let's 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 do an outro. That's what I was about to do. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, thank. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for listening to the Lair podcast. Uh, this was our first one, of course. If you've got any suggestions. 
feel free to contact us if you have any preferred topics that you'd like us to talk about contact us about that as well and uh, please subscribe yeah also if you think Dave is uh, an arsehole feel free to <laughs> pop that in the comments <laughs> Love you too. Everyone's saying, everyone saying oh, Max, you know next time I see you, I'm going to give you Max. the biggest hug. I think you need a hug, that's all it is. <laughs> Dave, Max just needs a hug. I, I'm Hashtag, not, I, I, am, a hug. I am not need. a touchy feely person, am I, Josh? It's going to happen, I don't care, it's happening. It's, I'm, I'm not saying anything because I think it'll be her. I'm going to hug your cats off. What? Exactly. Okay, well, if you want to see that, <laughs> tune in next time. <laughs>